I'm Laura Cassidy from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this news briefing from the ACS Fall 2019 National Meeting in San Diego. We're joined today by Dr. Delaram Amadi from King's College London. She's studying how skin creams aren't what we thought they were. Dr. Amadi. Thank you. I'm actually a PhD student. Um, that's okay. The research that I'm presenting here at the ACS conference concerns work we've carried out at King's College London and Rutherford Appleton Labs on the structure of aqueous creams, so creams like the one shown on the slide. Our work has revealed that the textbook view of cream structure is in some, res some respects rather naive and in other respects totally incorrect. Aqueous creams are emulsions of oil and water, just like mayonnaise and salad cream. They're widely used in cosmetics and pharmaceuticals, and they typically contain about 15 to 20 different ingredients. Uh, and about four or five of those are key ingredients which contribute to the formation and stability of the cream, whilst other ingredients are added to enhance the look and feel of the cream. At the moment, the recipes of creams are based largely on trial and error. And the consequences of additives like uh, preservatives, sunscreens, or antioxidants are hard for manufacturers to predict. The stability and properties of creams are governed by their internal molecular structure, or in other words, how these key ingredients arrange themselves within the cream. The structure of creams has been presented to us in textbooks, but the truth is that our knowledge is actually rather poor and incomplete because details about the structure have been inferred and determined through indirect experimental methods. In my research, we have secured an unprecedented level of detail on the structure of creams, exploiting the unique capabilities of neutron scattering experiments. So using neutrons, we've been able to determine the um, probe, the location of each ingredient one by one, by swapping the ingredient of choice with a different form containing deuterium instead of hydrogen, as shown in red on the image on the um, slide, in the previous slide. And we've made all the other ingredients invisible to the neutrons, um, as shown in green. And therefore, the scattering profile that arises is as a result of the deuterium ingredient only, and it tells us exactly where that ingredient is located and how it is arranged. Uh, on the next slide, we see that um, the in the textbook structure of creams, um, the oil droplets are covered with a mixed layer of ingredient, which help keep the droplets dispersed, whilst the excess form stacks of membranes or bilayers in the bulk with regions of water in between, which give the cream its viscosity or thickness. And we also see how an added antimicrobial preservative that's water soluble supposedly sits in the water phase where contaminating bacteria might thrive. As a result of my research, we now have a more detailed and complete picture of cream structure. And for the first time, we revealed direct evidence, not only of these membrane-like structures and their chemical composition, but also of these new small disc-shaped structures known as bicells, which have never been seen before. And we also see how the added antimicrobial preservative against all of our expectations actually associates with the bilayers and causes changes in the oil droplets and the layer that surrounds the oil droplets, which appears to be significantly roughened. And we also see how there's actually some oil, a small amount of oil being incorporated within the bilayers. In short, therefore, what we find is that a perfectly simple cream with just about six different ingredients can give rise to a much more complex picture than was previously thought. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Katie Cottingham, American Chemical Society. Um, so how did you get the idea to look at creams and how they were structured? It seemed like, oh, if you open a textbook, and there's the picture. Uh, how, did, how did you know to question that? 
Well, my PhD is actually sponsored by a pharmaceutical company, um, GSK. So um, they all, they have a product, they have a skincare kind of um, formulation team. So the idea of the project was initially, obviously, um, proposed by them. And um, I think going forward, um, the idea of form formulating cream uh, formulations is now driven by scientific rationale as opposed to kind of um, adding lo loads of ingredients to which as I mentioned can enhance the look and feel of the cream but an understanding of the structure and on a molecular level can um, aid the way creams are being used in different um, conditions that patients with dry skin uh, kind of suffer from so I think this is the idea, where the idea comes from, and it motivates us to understand the uh, molecular structure that's formed within the formulations, so we can better uh, target the, the skin. Okay. And um, in the press release, it says that creams might essentially be self-preserving. So does that mean that we don't need to add my antimicrobials to creams? Potentially, I mean, based on our research and um, such a deep molecular understanding and kind of um, identifying where this particular preservative is located within this sort of structure, what we found is that um, we would expect the, the preservative to locate in the aqueous phase because uh, bacteria like to thrive in the aqueous phase and the nature of our particular preservative is water water soluble so it was much to our surprise to find this particular ingredient being associated with the bilayers which can be very um, kind of lipid loving or lipophilic um, so and we've performed a series of experiment antimicrobial experiments not on this formulation but uh, we found that the creams that don't contain this preser preservative um, actually um, preserve themselves uh, relatively good to the creams that do contain the preservatives. So going forward, yeah, potentially it could mean that we can remove these preservatives that are being added for a particular um, consequence that is not particularly there. Other questions? Mike Lawrence, ACS. Um, so could you talk a little more about the implications of your findings for the efficacy of the creams for consumers? Uh, are they doing now what people buy them for? Or uh, are there ways to make them do that better based on your findings? To, to be honest, our research um it's not within the scope to actually advise against how these, uh, how efficacious the creams are, because at the end of the day, topical creams aren't medicinal products. They aren't regulated in that same way, so they don't necessarily have to be, um, let's say, we have to prove that they're efficacious. But I think an understanding of the molecular structure can drive future um, kind of formulations and experiments where they actually test um, formulations with such a structure on the skin to see how it influences the efficacy in terms of keeping the skin hydrated, for example. Um, but that's the way we can advise uh, ongoing kind of um, research in terms of consumer um, benefits. Thank you. Bill Buslig, ACS. Um, it, it, these uh, topical creams are usually used, uh, well, not usually, but some, uh, sometimes used for carriers for, uh, uh, for medicinal uh, compounds, uh, uh, anything uh, to, to relieve arthritis and so, uh, so forth. Is there some indication that uh, the, the structure that, uh, that's varied Due to the uh, 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 comp uh, components, uh, uh, whether whether they're uh, uh, they're uh, carry uh, or uh, essentially uh, micellar or or lamellar or, or so, uh, which 
where you vary the composition of the cream, uh, cream is, uh, is there some way of, of perhaps increasing the, the effectiveness of, of the carrying ability or, or, or reducing the effectiveness? Uh, I, it's, it's a very interesting thing considering the fact that a, a cream doesn't appear like, uh, like it's got any structure whatsoever, but, uh, but obviously it, it, it does uh, more than, than anybody expected. Certainly, I think the lamella structure has been known for maybe 20 to 30 years, and that's what we are presented in textbooks. But obviously, we haven't been presented with the exact composition of the bilayers that are in the bulk um, or the monolayer that forms around the oil droplets. And in the case of my research, the formation of these bicells, which have never been seen before. Um, therefore, I think there's great potential for, for example, the bicells to be used as um, a sort of drug carrier um, structures where perhaps a very lipophilic drug can be encapsulated um, in the bicells where it's surrounded by an aqueous phase. Um, so I think there's great potential um, now that we've learned a little bit more about the structure of these creams on a molecular level to um, now use active ingredients in the formulations and better rationalize what happens when we add that active ingredient. Because at the moment, ingredients are being incorporated, but there's no real scientific rationale in terms of the, what happens chemically um, in, the, in the molecular structure. Thank you. So what are your next steps for this research? Um, so we hope, we, well, at the moment, we are um, going to forward by working on a more, um, let's say, a complex structure, a, a formulation, where we have a physiologically relevant uh, surfactant because these formulations contain SDS and they can be irritant to the skin. So we are going forward by using a um, kind of natural phospholipid and then assessing how um, there are changes within the molecular, internal molecular structure, which can lead to um, potential changes in the properties of the cream, like the long-term stability and the in-use barrier repair properties. Because um, the idea is that these sort of creams mimic the structure of the skin. And therefore, if we incorporate a physiologically relevant lipid, we can better repair the um, barrier function of the skin that can become compromised in different dry skin conditions. Okay. All right, thank you. The archive version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS 2019 San Diego. Please join us for our next press conference at 11 a.m. on how chocolate muddles cannabis potency testing. Thank you. Thank you.